shots fired from Google at OpenAI. People are already finding ways to use AI for Pran and how the AI revolution is very different from the early dot-com bubble. If you're watching the AI report, we have a lot of exciting AI news for you today. Let's get into it. Whoa, okay, look at all of these tabs. Lots of AI action today. Where to begin? Just so you know, I purposefully tried to reduce the number of things I cover. I want to only include the most relevant things. But today is just one of those days that has a ton of interesting, fascinating and scary developments in AI. Okay, Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis fires shots at ChatGPT, claiming that the new AI model they're working on called Gemini will be more powerful than ChatGPT. I think there's a strong likelihood for this, since Gemini will be multi-model and trained not just on text, but on video data as well. Who knows how powerful this thing will be. Also, some of OpenAI's key employees are not satisfied with how the company is going, and some have already escaped to Google. This is gonna be the beef of the century in my opinion. Apparently, OpenAI's employees are not happy with the company's lightning fast growth from 100 to 600 employees. And also, Sam Altman has been criticized for only having a superficial understanding of day-to-day -day operations. Interesting. Honestly, I'm not sure I'm in favor of this sort of criticism. I mean, there's always one person, one leader who puts the whole thing together, makes the plan and executes it. And in this case, one person who kind of resurrected this entire AI field back into public focus. And he's also like, you know, giving you a job. I also have some employees in my other businesses. Sometimes you just need people to do their jobs, trust your vision and leadership, and not really worry about things above their pay grade. To me, it seems like Altman is actually doing a lot of good for the field, and maybe even the world in general. But the people are free to do what they want, employees leaving OpenAI is not a good thing for them, and the people going to work for the biggest rival is even worse. So yeah, let's grab some popcorn and watch a good fight. Tesla wants to cut their dependency on Nvidia chips, and will start working on AI hardware of their own nickname Dojo. Cool name. AI is a key field for Tesla because, you know, you want those self-driving cars to not identify you as a crosswalk and run you over. The last trillion dollar company for today, Microsoft, introduces a new system for training large AI models called Zero Plus Plus. It will improve training efficiency and reduce training time and cost. This kind of news is a bit underreported. It doesn't really sound sexy because A, it's Microsoft. They've never really been like the cool hipster startup where CEOs go on ayahuasca journeys. And B, they always look for ways to make money in the business and enterprise sectors. And not so much by encouraging teenagers to do strange dances on social media. And that's why they're making so much money. Look, Microsoft is like your dad's favorite company. If you're under 25, you probably don't even have a single contact point with Microsoft. But something like 480 out of the Fortune 500 companies use Microsoft, and when they make moves like this, you should pay attention. Zero Plus Plus, this thing sounds like a super boring business clip on tie accounting nerd stuff. But this is a step towards the most lucrative move in AI enable businesses to train models on their own data and do it quickly and cheaply. Forget about all of those deepfake commercials and absurd mid-journey pictures and prompting AI to talk dirty to you. This is how companies like Microsoft will go from $2 trillion in market cap to $10 trillion. Speaking of prompting AI to talk dirty to you, people are already using Facebook's LLM Llama to make graphic sex bots. I'm surprised it took this long. You may not know this, but Pran was actually one of the biggest drivers of technological improvements for the internet. Because people wanted so much of it, the internet had to evolve in terms of speed, reliability and user friendliness. It would be funny if history repeats itself and demand for AI Pran is the key driver of AI improvements. And there's a lot of concerns about how this technology may be abused potentially, especially by people with, you know, darker tendencies. But I think this may be a net win because if those people enact their, like, dark fantasies on AI chatbots instead of real people, that's actually a net win. It still feels a bit eerie, actually a lot eerie, and it may eventually make AI so disgusted by humans that it decides to wipe us out. But it doesn't sound illegal for now, seems like nobody's really getting hurt in the real world, so maybe it's a good thing, who knows. But 
there's a whole other hidden dark side that AI sex bots have that will be a general net loss for humanity as a whole. This will further shift an already unstable dating dynamic that's getting worse by the day. I know we live in a post-gender utopia now and men and women are entirely identical and all of that, but we all know that men will use this thing a lot more than women. Like, a lot more. And with sex bots and later even robots easily available, men will even have less incentive to work on themselves, improve, and actually talk to real women, which also means women will have fewer good dating options. Maybe even they will start to turn to sex bots and robots. We don't have time for the full rant now and this is a whole other video on its own. Keep an eye out for a video coming soon on this channel on how AI will affect dating. And since we're on that topic, the founder of a new dating app believes exactly the opposite. Lior Baruch. The founder of Elgo AI Tech uses AI to connect people better by asking people insightful questions about them and matching them with potential partners based on their answers. Their algorithms use many data points and predictors of successful dating experiences to train their AI. This sounds like a good idea for people that are looking for a more serious thing maybe. I just don't think it will work exactly like that. Men are more visual when it comes to choosing partners. Something like 95% of this channel's audience is men and we can all pretty much guarantee that we start with the looks and in many cases we just end there. These insightful questions may be relevant for women looking for a husband and two and a five kids and a dog and a mortgage but also it's not so simple for them as well because attraction for women is well that's a whole other topic for another video as well. In fact, for a whole new channel, probably. But hey, if these guys can use AI to understand women, hats off to them. I think we will develop a super powerful godlike artificial general intelligence and it will still not understand women. <laughs> Speaking of things that are hard to understand, let's talk about art. Nikolai Tangen, a Norwegian investor, art collector and I'm guessing a polite guy with great table manners based on this picture, sees nothing wrong with AI creating better art than humans. His quote, hey, if AI creates better art, that's fantastic. If you create something which is even more aesthetically pleasing, what's wrong with that? End quote. Well, for art consumers, probably nothing wrong. For art creators, well, that's actually an interesting thought experiment. Art taste is subjective. And art is not supposed to be a competition. At least that's what my elementary school teacher told me. So we can't even say AI will create better art because, in a way, one piece of art can't be better than another. The aspect of art that AI can affect the most is its economics. We've heard tons of great stories about the stereotypical starving artist, but when AI creates a million abstractionist paintings a minute, seven of which will be true masterpieces just by dumb luck, and the artist person needs six months and a lot of pain and alcohol to produce just one painting, it will be simply impossible for our struggling creator to pay the bills. The starving artist may actually die from starvation this time. One possibility I think is very likely is that very few things actually change when it comes to AI and art. Art patrons will simply value human art because that's just how we're wired. And while AI art will clog the world, human art will have a premium price just because an entire human life and experience and learning and suffering have gone into producing it. Computers have been better than humans in games like chess for years now. And yet nobody would watch a game of chess between two AIs unless they themselves want to become a chess AI. I'm sure one day we'll have robots that have the coordination required to fight in the UFC. And finally someone will be able to beat John Jones. But who would want to see a fight between a robot and a human? When it comes to games and competition, human beings have this pesky morality circuit that we can't seem to get rid of and it requires us to value games that are fair. That's why AI and humans won't really compete in many of these creative or expressive endeavors. Okay, I just talked about art for a few minutes straight, it probably sounded super obnoxious, but the good people of Reddit are here to talk about something even more obnoxious and make me look not so bad in comparison. And the only thing that's more obnoxious than art is fashion. So we have the first AI generated fashion show here, created by using only open source software on affordable hardware. Let's take a look. Okay, I gotta stop here because I'm gonna puke. <laughs> Beautiful things don't ask for attention. That's not my quote, I wish I said that. Actually, Sean Penn said it in that strange Ben Stiller movie, but it sounds amazingly true. It really resonates with me a ton 
which is why these fashion people always creep me out with their endless thirst for attention. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if AI replaces fashion shows. I guess my interest would remain the same, which is at level zero. This video was even creepier than a usual fashion show though, which might mean that fashion people will like it more, who knows. So maybe Balenciaga will be on their toes now and will have to further raise their prices to half a million dollars for an ugly t-shirt with one word on it. Next, we have AI penetrating the sales game. This is inevitable. AI will be used in sales calls on a massive scale. It will generate the text through a chatbot like ChatGPT. It will have the sales training of an elite salesperson with years of manipulating people. And it will use voice cloning to sound like a very persuasive Morgan Freeman that has the best intentions for you and is concerned about your home insurance policy. So AI is used to sell home insurance and soon it's gonna be used to sell everything. Another reason to keep my phone in do not disturb mode. By the way, don't get the wrong idea here. I'll definitely start working on a sales bot that will cold call people and sell them on my $497 course on how to use AI to stay relevant in this new robot world. Snap Calorie will use AI to estimate the caloric content of food. Up until now, you took a picture of your Denny's Grand Slam and put it on Instagram. But now you can add a step in between. You can have Snap Calorie use AI on that picture and tell you why that Danny's Grand Slam is a really bad idea. So, the app will estimate the portion size, although you can adjust it yourself if it's wrong, and it will tell you what's in the meal, how many calories and macros does it have, and all the good nutritional information. You can finally have a precise estimate on how many calories you really eat and exactly how much you are failing your keto diet. Seriously though, I really like this idea, I hope their app works well. I'm guessing it will have trouble recognizing like smaller ingredients in the food and parts and pieces of different foods and precisely identifying everything. But if it's good enough, it will help people eat better. Personalized AI will help you stay safe from cybercrime. So the Israeli startup Riskana has this tool called Vega that will analyze text and media and data and will help people avoid scams. I just released a video on AI scams a few days ago Go watch that if you haven't, it's really important. It's likely that many of the scams will make use of AI and now we have counter AI to combat those AI scams. So essentially we're gonna have a bunch of AIs trying to out manipulate one another. Man, what a time to be alive. Former Google CEO and possibly person with great eye contact based on this pick, Eric Schmidt, thinks that the 2024 US elections will be a mess because of AI misinformation. Well, I mean, kind of. How bad can it really get? Politicians are already liars. The US has just two parties. Both of them are equally bad. The elections are basically one giant theater play where the taller, wider, crazier male wins. Does it even matter who wins? No, seriously, this will be a problem. Schmidt thinks that social media platforms have the responsibility to try and label AI-generated content. And that should be a good short to medium term solution. I agree. I don't think it will do much good because people out there will believe anything, uh, flat earth anybody, and the crazier the thing is, the harder they will believe it. But still, the platforms should do their jobs and not just allow misinformation to run rampant. Speaking of misinformation running rampant, junk websites filled with AI generated text are pulling in money from programmatic ads. If you haven't been brutalized by the SEO world like myself, this might be news to you. But if you're a blogger or a content creator, you will know that this has been an ongoing problem for years. Although now it has got much, much worse. People simply spin up websites, have AI generate ungodly amounts of low quality content and earn money by displaying ads. Sounds like a pretty good business idea actually. No, but the thing is, Google and possibly other search engines are somewhat good at recognizing these sites and not really ranking them. Typically. These sites will either never rank at all or rank for a short period of time and then get penalized and removed from the search results. It's a short term play that's not really that lucrative for most people. There are some people who eventually make a good buck out of it, but luck is also a huge factor and in a few months they usually have to do a different thing. Don't ask me how I know this. The thing is, I'm not sure this will be a huge problem. It is a problem for sure, but search engines may have the solution for it. I like this comparison between the internet bubble and the AI revolution. James Revshark Depor from The Street says that AI is different because there will be a lot fewer new companies created. 
probably because of the bigger barrier to entry. Training LLMs is not cheap nor easy for now and we only have a few big players that are really the movers and shakers in the industry. But on the other hand, we're already seeing AI having a lot of use cases for businesses, which was not the case during the dot-com bubble. Mm, yeah, good points. Although I think we will start seeing more AI startups as time goes by and people need more custom solutions. And San Francisco-based venture fund Kindred shared the same opinion. They believe that we will see a massive explosion of startups all thanks to AI. They think AI will allow more people to become creators and we will have more application layer, hardware, infrastructure and tooling companies. Yeah, as I said, I have a similar opinion. Obviously, huge companies with megatons of data will benefit from AI the most, but small creators will be able to become a lot more effective and even more versatile. I can attest to this myself. I'm a one-man team for now, not to tap myself on the shoulder too much, but I'm like the John Wick of AI videos. I do everything by myself, I ask for no help, and I'm pretty effective at times. And I expect to inspire legions of copycats very soon. You're all welcome. And finally, we're at the last piece for today, and it's a good one. A research paper published this month by the National Bureau of Economic Research suggests that the last time we had even a moderate increase in interest in deep learning and AI technologies, we actually had a growth in jobs, especially high-skilled, cushy office jobs. What we have now is a huge increase of interest in AI technologies, and that can easily result in even greater growth in jobs. Wow, we got through it. That was the AI report. I don't think we've done a longer AI report so far. I hope you learned a lot today, and if you don't hit those like and subscribe buttons now, I'm gonna set myself on fire in the next video. I'll see you tomorrow.